This episode of Nerdist News is sponsored by Marvel Puzzle Quest. We've got a first look at Snoke's Praetorian Guards and we're breaking down what they mean for the Supreme Leader in Episode 8. As we continue to sift through Entertainment Weekly's The Last Jedi cover story, we're picking up on some new info about the flick as well as some hidden details on Snoke's bodyguards and how they could reveal some clues about him. So, light spoilers ahead. <laughs> Now, while the Praetorians have definitely taken inspiration from the Emperor's Guards in Return of the Jedi, we've heard that these new protectors will do a hell of a lot more than just stand, walk, and turn like their OG trilogy brethren. Now, we've previously speculated on their look and weaponry thanks to a piece of commissioned art shared by the folks over at MakingStarWars.net, but with the first official images of the Guards, we now have confirmation of a few key points. For instance, the long flowing robes worn by the Imperial Guards are replaced with armor and the helmets look more angular and fitted. Now if you take a look at the weapon seen in this photo, you can tell that they differ with each guard getting a personalized weapon. We've heard rumors that each guard will have specialization in a different weapon style and even heard that one guard might have some sort of energy nunchucks. You can even see a bit of an energy blade emanating from their weapons. Of course, the look of the guards comes directly from the classic samurai films that influenced Ryan Johnson. They have to be built to move, and you have to believe that they could step forward and engage if they have to, Johnson said, adding, they have to seem dangerous. And we have reason to believe that they will in fact step forward and engage with Rey. In the behind the scenes video dropped last month, we saw shots of Daisy Ridley training against multiple opponents. This could be a preview of things to come as Rey and Luke go after Snoke and take on his guards. Another detail that we're thinking about more deeply is the deep red hue of the Praetorian armor. This clearly is a direct homage to the color scheme of Palpatine. Team's crew, but we think there's another layer of functionality hidden within the crimson padding. So let's roll back that BTS footage if you take a look at the background in this shot, all red. So we think the guard's full red getup is actually camouflage. Imagine walking into Snoke's throne room with that solid red back wall and thinking it's just the two of you. You get ready to attack him in this vulnerable state, but surprise, death. Now Ryan Johnson also admits that the name Praetorian came from an era a long time ago, specifically our a long time ago. They were actually the elite guards for the Roman emperors who also sometimes served as Rome's secret police, so score one for history class. We now also know from RJ that Snoke will do a lot more in episode eight, with his personal bodyguards getting a lot more action than their imperial predecessors. Now this means we'll get an up close in the flesh version of old Snokey, not exactly in the flesh. The EW feature confirmed that the character will be fully motion captured. Andy Serkis' on-set stand-in was a maquette, which was used for lighting and for the actor's reference of what Snoke's presence would feel like. Now here's the thing though, when they mo-capped Serkis for Snoke in The Force Awakens, it made perfect sense since he was projecting himself as a giant hologram, but now we're even more unsure as to whether Snoke is a tall boy or a small boy. Why CGI what looks like a crater face but otherwise normal-ish looking humanoid alien dude? Perhaps there are some other of Snoke's physical features that can't be properly showcased with practical effects. It definitely feels like when December rolls around, Snoke's true physical form will be revealed in a Wizard of Oz drawing back the curtain kind of way. But what do you think? What could be the real reason Snoke will be completely CGI and what other weapons would you like to see from the Praetorian Guards? Let's discuss. And a very special thanks to Marvel Puzzle Quest for sponsoring today's episode. Marvel Puzzle Quest is the match three game that lets you play alongside all of your favorite Marvel characters, including Mary Poppins, y'all. That's right. To celebrate the digital release of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Yondu has arrived to fight alongside Groot, Rocket, and the rest of the Guardians in the OG Match 3 RPG. You can battle in PvP and PvE events to win Yondu or other newcomers to the game like Mockingbird and the all-new Spider-Man. And hey, if you find yourself at Gen Con, stop by the Puzzle Quest booth number 2919 for a free prize. We promise that it won't be a Zoom. Thanks, Puzzle Quest! <laughs>